Hey, hey, everybody. I am Melissa Haley, broker at North Texas Top Team Realtors. Welcome. Welcome to our Facebook Live. Tonight, we are going to talk about all things home ownership and how the winter weather affects us here in North Texas. As a matter of fact, just severe weather all the way around. And we're going to also chat about the state of the real estate market in 2023. And while we're waiting for everybody to jump on the Facebook Live, let me quickly introduce everyone. Tonight, I have Camilo Ardila here with me. Camilo is one of our awesome realtors at North Texas Top Team. Hi, Camilo. I'm Melissa. I'm so glad to be here with you. Oh, we're so glad you're here. I mean, you got good stuff to share with us tonight. I just know. <laughs> I believe so, too. I believe so, too. Um, all right. The other person I have here with me, she's kind of behind the scenes. You may not be able to see her, actually, or maybe you can. I don't know. She might be there. Uh, but that is going to be Gabby Powell. Gabby is like our right-hand woman, and she keeps all the things running. So, Gabby, we're so glad you're here with us today. Hi, everybody. I'm super happy to be here. And yes, I will be in the background. <laughs> That's that's what we love. You know what? We need you. We need you keeping things running smooth and keeping us rolling. Um, and for, you know, everybody who's just joining in, Gabby's always here. She's always in the background. She's making everything work. Just saying. Yes. <laughs> I'm like always omnipresent. Here. <laughs> omnipresent and we need it. Right, Camilo? <laughs> so we're just about to get started and we're going to chat about home ownership and winter weather. And, you know, that's yesterday. It was like 70 degrees today. It was like 30. I was freezing today. Um, but for those of you who are watching, don't go anywhere, stick with us all night because we're going to give away some information at the end of the night about the real estate market. I think you're going to find it super helpful. So anyway, Camilo, thanks yes. for joining us. Do you mind, um, if before we really get started, if, if everybody could just get to know you a little bit, do you mind just sharing maybe your story or just tell us a little bit about yourself? Absolutely. Well, in the words of uh, Will Ferrell, I was born a baby. No. <laughs> <laughs> I love some Will Ferrell, I have to say. <laughs> I was I was born in uh, Bogota, Colombia. I grew up in Jakarta, Indonesia. I lived there for about 10 years, graduated from high school there. I was recruited to come play soccer here in the United States. Um, let's see, I've been married for 29 years to my best friend, Barbara. The two of us have four kiddos. Three are in college. Uh, one is out of college. He's doing his big boy job. He's going to get married in May. And so he's living at home. We thought we were going to be uh, empty nesters. We sent out our last one to the University of Arkansas. And the two oldest came back that same week to come and live with us. Uh, great kids, though. I'm a huge soccer fan, as, uh, as stated by, by all the playing that I did. So over the course of the last 15 years, my wife and I have been running a, uh, a soccer business, which is uh, making its way out as I enter into this full time. Well, I'm doing this full time, real estate full time. Uh, let's see. I've been with Melissa for several months now and it's one of the best decisions i absolutely love uh the the brokerage north texas top team it's been fantastic oh that's awesome i love it that you talked about your kiddos because um, i'm with you i have several kiddos and as mine grew up they moved out they came back they moved out they came back do you do you need a revolving door in your front door camilo <laughs> we have a key <laughs> <laughs> and so did their friends it's funny. We'll have a uh, college. I'm not kidding you. This is not made up, but we'll go. None of our kids are in town. And all of a sudden the door will open up and it's one of their friends coming to stay the night. <laughs> oh my gosh. Isn't that awesome though? I it love is. it that everybody feels comfortable coming to your home. That's a, that's a testament to you. Well, thank you. Absolutely. Well, I think it's great that everybody got to know you a little bit before we get started. Um, and I know you're going to have great information about, you know, the, the home ownership aspect today. And for people that are watching, I know they're going to learn a lot of great stuff for you. So, you know, just really more than anything, let me just thank you once again. Thank you. Thank you for spending your time with me tonight and, and sharing your wisdom. I think, I think people are going to appreciate it. <laughs> thank you. It's my pleasure. All right. So our topic tonight is something I think everybody in North Texas has experienced lately, right? Winter weather. 
And that could be just from like a couple of weeks ago when we were having the ice storm and all the schools were closed. And, you know, and then, like I said earlier, it was 70 yesterday and it's like 30 today. Not that we're having terrible, you know, storms, but 30 and it's cold. And I, I know that, I mean, I'm sure you remember it was really bad last year, right? When we had the freeze in Mageddon and, man, all kinds of stuff. Pipes were breaking and my swimming pool froze over. It was just, it was days and days of cold weather. So in North Texas, I think people need to know how to be prepared for winter weather when, once, you know, they're a homeowner. Don't you agree? Absolutely. Yeah. With this wacky North Texas weather. Yeah. hundred percent. So I think the first step though, before you can even talk about preparing your home for winter weather is well, first you got to be a homeowner, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think let's talk about the market first and then we'll circle back to winter weather if that's okay with you. Sounds good. Yeah. All right. So I know there may be somebody watching today that's wondering, you know, what's going on in the market? I hear the interest rates and all the things, and some people are still probably scarred from last year's real estate market being, you know, trying to be a buyer. It was such a difficult time. So I think people are probably wondering right now, is now a good time to buy a house? You know, is that something that that I should do if I'm thinking about becoming a homeowner? Is now a good time, Camilo? Yeah, absolutely. It's a good time. Awesome. So people are probably wondering where to start. If they wanted to buy a house this year, what would they need to do to get started? Well, I think the first step is to talk to a realtor. You know, at our office, we offer a free home buyer consultation where we go over the entire process of buying a home. Yeah. Then make sure you get pre-approved for a mortgage and ensure you have the funds available for the down payment and uh, things like closing costs. Sure. Yeah, I think the free consultation sounds like a great place to start. That way, I think people can get as much information as possible about the process so that they can make the best informed decision. But I mean, now that I've had this consultation and I've kind of started the process of working on the money, is it really still a good time to buy a house? Is now the right time? Yeah, I would, yeah, absolutely. And I'll tell you why. Interest rates have come back down over the past few weeks. Additionally, the market has shifted from that extreme seller's market that we saw in 2021 all the way midway through 2022. Buyers have more power now to negotiate on pricing terms than they had right after the global events of the last two years. Uh, this is actually a really good time to buy a home. That's awesome. Well, I think that that's that's not only great info, I feel like it's hopeful for the community, right? It's hopeful for people that are thinking about buying a house. So I love that. Thank you for sharing the information about the the market. So let's just assume somebody's become a homeowner. They came in, they, they found out that they could buy a house, they bought a house. Now let's get to that topic at hand, right? Mm. So once they buy a home, Now they need to know how to protect it during severe weather in North Texas. And I think it's probably important just to be thinking about that. Even as even as we've already experienced some of the freeze, that doesn't mean we're out of the woods yet, as evidenced by today. So what should a homeowner be thinking about as winter weather is upon us? What do you what do you recommend? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I know we're going to delve into much more detail, but there are a few things just as an overview that a homeowner should do to consider protecting this this quite possibly largest investment that they have. Everything from letting the faucets drip during a freeze specifically and opening cabinet doors to covering outdoor spigots and having supplies on hand. Uh, And I'd love to cover some of these topics in more depth. Yeah, Yeah, I think that sounds perfect. Let's do it. Let's do it. Um, All right. So I think it's important for homeowners in Texas to hear about the stuff that you're talking about, right? That I think you want to dive into a little bit more in depth. I think it's important for people to understand because I believe, I mean, I've been, I'm a native Texan. I've only lived here. I don't know any different, but I believe that our severe weather is probably different from other parts of the country, right? Because Mm -hmm. I know when people move here, they're always asking me things like, what about tornadoes or whatever? Like they have a lot of questions about our winter weather and our weather in general in Texas. But those people who maybe haven't lived in a colder climate like me, maybe I, we don't know the tips and tricks that people use in other parts of the country where maybe the climates are colder. And I think I think that could be something that could be helpful. Do you, do you feel like that's true? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You need to have those, those, uh, those insights. 
up your sleeve for sure when that weather hits. Yeah. Okay. Well, so let's start off with some things that a homeowner can do inside the house. Is that okay? Yeah, let's, let's do it. All right. So what should I do? I'm a homeowner now. What should I do inside my house to be best prepared for severe weather? Well, this isn't in any particular order, but uh, one of the first things you can do is make sure that you open up cabinet doors to allow the warm air to keep the pipes under the sink warm. Um, open the faucets at the kitchen and bathroom sinks to allow the water to keep moving. Uh, by opening up faucets, I, uh, it's where you allow a few drops per minute. You know, it doesn't have to be this big, severe gush. Otherwise, it could be really expensive. Uh, this could help prevent frozen pipes inside of a home. Additionally, it's a good idea to check for drafts making their way in through windows and door frames. Most of the time, you can resolve this issue by either caulking or adding stripping to windows and doors. And if it's the bottom of a door that's allowing cold air, there are door guards. And you, uh, you just, in some cases, just slide them underneath the bottom of, of the door to create an additional buffer. Now, you can find this stuff at local hardware stores or you can go online and get things to protect these against drafts for probably under $10. And if you're a little bit, you know, a little bit miserly, a little bit stingy, you know, it's totally okay to kind of wrap a towel and just press it up against the door. Oh, that's awesome. You, you, have you been in my house? <laughs> I totally <laughs> oh, yeah. have a drafty front door. I should totally be putting a, a towel or something down for sure. That's my back door. Yeah, for sure. It's my front door <laughs> in my house. <laughs> So it sounds easy enough, right? Like it doesn't even, I mean, I'm not handy. I think I could do all of those things. No tools needed, right? Because mm -hmm. just opening some cabinets, turning on the faucet. These are things I know how to do. Um, what else should a homeowner do to prepare for severe weather? What other options would you suggest? Yeah, I mean, we can go outside uh, and we'll go inside in a little bit as well. We'll we'll add to some of what I just said. But if you go outside, we do, we talk about the exterior. Exterior, okay. you have gutters. Make sure you clean them out so you don't have uh, or create blockage. If water isn't flowing through those channels, it could in some cases freeze, cause overflow that could come back into your home through damaged or poorly installed flashing. It could cause soil erosion. And if that's left unchecked over time, it could create foundation issues. Mm. And finally, gutters that overflow will most definitely, Melissa, Find those begonias you planted three hours ago. Oh, yeah. You know, I actually have a spot at my house where some of my flower bed has been damaged because the gutters just what just when it's raining, not even in a freeze. So I totally get that. Um, and I love it that you brought up foundation because that's another question that people from, you know, outside of the North Texas area are always asking about their foundation. And this is, this is a really important part, right? Yeah. Like maintaining that. Yeah, absolutely. Especially because of the soil type we have in North Texas. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. So, all right. So good, smart tips so far. Um, and you know what else I think I I've always heard this from home inspectors. Water is your home's worst enemy. Mm -hmm. And so I think it is really important. And I really like it that you kind of touched on this whole gutter situation, because if you can allow water to properly flow away from your home, that it helps with all kinds of things, including that foundation, right? Yeah, um, right. So what about, so what other things? I mean, I, I kind of have some in the back of my head, but what, what else could a homeowner do to prepare for severe weather? What other ideas do you have? Yeah, I would say one of the most important things you can do is know, know how to shut off that main supply to your, to your home. That's mm -hmm. huge. It's really mm -hmm. important. And I'm, I'm amazed that most people probably haven't done it or don't know where it is. Uh, most often you'll find uh, it close to the curb. It looks like a manhole, Melissa. Uh, you know, although in some cases it can be rectangular, uh, your builder or the previous homeowner should have left you with a tool that in some cases yeah, you'll need to remove that cover yeah. as well as to shut off that valve. Uh, this tool is called uh, a meter key or a meter wrench. And in some cases, it looks like a T-shaped steel rod mm -hmm. with a small inverted horseshoe at the bottom that slips over a valve. 
All you do is turn it 90 degrees, 180 degrees, and it should do the trick. Uh, while it's obvious you need to turn it off in the event of a burst pipe, experts suggest that you turn it off before going off on vacation. So oh. if you're going off, yeah. So if you're going off to Aspen or to, you know, in the winter time, not a bad idea to turn it. Yeah. Uh, as you can imagine, pipes burst far more often in the winter than in any other season. And the water damage caused by a rupture is not only a major hassle, but oftentimes incredibly expensive. Oh, yeah. As my parents can testify, uh, when you call it freeze mageddon, I called it snow mageddon. Sure. And, and when that hit a couple of years ago, my parents were out of house and home for over two months while they were fixing the floors because of the supply chain and a lack of labor, they had to wait, something that would have taken only, you know, normally a week or two weeks. For them, it was two months. And they're elderly. Uh, this also happened to my brother that same week in a rental home that sadly he did not have insurance coverage. So it became uh, incredibly expensive. Yeah. Oh, that's just heartbreaking. Was Wait, he was the landlord or he was the renter? He was the landlord. <coughs> oh, man. Well, I think it's important. It's actually a good stopping spot for just a second, not on topic of winter weather, but boy, if you are renting, you need renter's insurance mm. so that your items are covered in that sort of a situation. Like, you know, your couch and stuff is covered, but man, if you're a landlord, for sure, keep insurance on that property, especially for things like this. Cause that, that sounds, I bet it was expensive. Oh, huge. Yeah. 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 Man. All right. Well, so what other suggestions do you have? Do you have anything else? You, you said we would maybe circle back to the interior a little bit, or I don't know, maybe you have more exterior things. What are some other suggestions for helping us keep our homes protected in the, in the yeah, winter? Run? For sure. Uh, it is kind of a checklist and we can discuss it, you know, if, if, sure. if you want. Uh, so one thing is check your heating, heating system, mm -hmm. have your heating system checked by a professional, make sure it's in good working condition change your air filters regularly to improve air quality and reduce heating cost. Yeah. I don't know any insights onto into that. Well, I think, you know, here's here's what I recommend, right? Is for for folks that are buying a home and especially if it's your first home. Uh, but folks that are buying a home, one of the parts of the contract for the uh, resale contract in Texas says the seller will pay x number of dollars for the buyer in order to buy a home warranty. And I totally recommend getting a home warranty because, you know, even if you never have anything break, which that's great for that, but even if you don't, they will send out somebody for a predetermined service call fee. They can check your air conditioning in the summer and check your heater in the winter. I, I think that's, I think it's a fabulous idea. And if you could do that through your service contract, I think that that's important too, because you'll get a better price. That's a good peace of mind. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. hundred yeah. percent. Okay. All right. So we've checked our heater. We've checked our gutters. We've opened the cabinets. We've turned on the faucets. We've rolled up that stuff, you know, the towel or whatever, and put it by the door. What else do we need to do in case, you know, there's an emergency here? Well, a lot of times, yeah. And, and this is great. Ha and a lot of times this is an emergency. It becomes an emergency uh, situation. Have an emergency kit with you in case of mm -hmm. power outages or other emergencies. Um yeah. Things that include flashlights, extra batteries, blankets, non-perishable foods. If you have a fireplace, stock up on a couple of days worth of wood. Uh, when Snowmageddon hit us, we were without power for over 50 hours. <sighs> yeah, it was it, it was quite devastating. Thankfully, we had friends that called us immediately and, and, and had us come over. But we had to come back and check on the house to see if everything was in working condition, that no pipes burst. And uh, at one point, we needed to cook. And so we actually made our dinner in the fireplace. <laughs> only, 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 hey, quite tasty chicken I made that day, if I may add. In the fireplace. Yeah, I in the fireplace. That. Oh, yeah. I, yeah was... I thought maybe you were like, we cooked dinner, and I'm thinking popcorn, s'mores, like a hot dog. <laughs> chicken. <laughs> I love that. That's awesome. And I have to say, okay, so Stanley is like that firewood kind of guy, right? Like if it's getting yeah. cold outside, he always wants to have plenty of firewood. And, you know, it doesn't even have to be freezing outside and we'll be having a fire in our fireplace because it really warms up my living room at my house. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm the same way. I'm like Stanley. Yeah. I got my stock in the backyard. 
I have, yeah, a couple of weeks worth of wood. <laughs> That's awesome. So I, I have to ask, so 50 hours or 52 hours or 50, 50 something hours, no power. Yeah. And I know you weren't there, but mm. it was really cold. How cold do you think it got inside your house with no heat? And of course you weren't there running the fire or anything like that. Yeah. <clears throat> but how cold do you think it was on the interior temperature? Do you know? You know, I want to say that it was in the 30s in the, yeah. It inside was, the house. Inside the house. Yeah. Yeah. Man. It was it was uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess that's why we had so many pipes burst, right? Because if yeah. one of the tips is open the cabinet so that the warm air can circulate, and then we don't have any electricity and it's not warm air, that, you know, that causes some problems. Because we did have a lot of busted pipes all over the Metroplex during that really big freeze last year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, so what else? Is there anything else that we need to be doing um, to be prepared? Give give us a couple of other tips. Absolutely. I have three more for you. Okay. Uh, Let's just keep them. snow. Yeah. Keep snow and ice away uh, from your home. Clear snow and ice from your driveway, walkways, entrances to prevent any kind of slips or falls. Okay. Uh, if removing ice from your walkway is too difficult, and in some cases, yeah, it just accumulated so quickly that it was it was tough to kind of chip away at it. What we do is we throw lightly damped towels, and uh, you know, caveat: don't blame me if it doesn't work. It works for us. These lightly damped towels, and they adhere. They tend to kind of stick to the ice, and it's a lot more traction than if you're walking on ice. So we put it in strategic spaces to, to help us get to our car in the event we need, or if somebody was coming to coming over to the house. Yeah, I think that's a cool idea. I'm think when you said lightly damp, I'm, what I'm picturing is like, you know, they're always doing that joke where people stick their tongue to the cold pole and it sticks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you put your lightly damp towel down on the ice and it just sticks. Yeah. Um, I, I feel like that's a really cool idea because, you know, in Texas, we're not one of those climates where people have like salt just laying around, right? Because I think probably in places where they get more snow and ice than we do, that might be something that they have. Let's just throw some, some salt down or some sand down or something like that. And I have towels. I don't have salt. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we do too. <laughs> yeah. I feel like that's a, that's a really, that's a really informative tip for sure. Yeah. Okay. okay. What else you got? You said you had three. Well, that was one. Yeah, so I got I got a couple more. Yeah. Okay. Have, have a generator. Okay. This is really, really important. And this could literally be a lifesaver. Okay. okay. So I'm using literally in the correct sense of the word. And yeah. here's why. If you have if you have meds in the fridge and they need to remain a certain temperature, all right, then you're set. You got to have the refrigerator like plugged in. Yeah. Uh, you know, additionally, and this is kind of one of those other tips that I had for the interior, you can plug a few um, heat lamps, you know, and maybe attach them to uh, those pipes that are especially the ones that are closer to exterior walls. Mm. And just make sure that that uh, nothing is freezing in there. Yeah. Uh, so you can you can plug in heaters. And my my recommendation is if you can stay in a smaller contained room, right? Uh, because trying to heat up a house with a space heater is very difficult, particularly right. if the temperature is you're talking about the 30s, 40s, it's not going to happen. You're still going to be cold. Sure. Um, so find a room, ideally find a room that doesn't take that much work to heat up. Mm. Yeah, I think that sounds like a great idea because I keep a space heater under my desk. I'm just saying because I get cold all the time. Yeah. <laughs> but you're right. It wouldn't it wouldn't heat my whole house. But I have a question about the generator, right? Because I would think <laughs> I'm just and I don't own a generator, but I would think that would be a really expensive item to buy. Are are generators expensive? I mean, I don't well, know. Yeah, they're not cheap. Uh but uh, I, I would say it's it's relative, right? It's okay. so it's yeah. you can get one for about five hundred dollars. You know, a good, very you know, good reliable one, and the more permanent ones can go up to you know six seven thousand dollars. Those are the ones that when your power goes off, they turn on automatically, so they're hooked up to the you know to 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 identify a power outage. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking in my head. I didn't realize there was like maybe a smaller option. So that's good to know. Okay. Yeah. yeah. 
All right. Well, so you said you had three tips. Yeah, this so is like you this, gave us two. Do you have one more? Kind, this is the last one right here. This is all I, like I got, it. Melissa. Okay. Like it. Uh, finally, if it's in the budget, maybe call a professional to come and do an energy audit. That would be really quite uh, quite helpful. Uh, and really, what that is. And I, I, I'm just going to read to you here from, from something I have. Uh, okay. A home energy audit is also known as a home energy assessment or home energy evaluation. Okay. Uh, it's a comprehensive assessment of a home's energy efficiency. The purpose of a home energy audit is to identify those areas where a home is wasting energy okay. and to recommend cost-effective energy-saving improvements that can help reduce energy consumption and lower energy bills. But uh, you have somebody that's qualified to come over and do okay. that audit for you. Awesome. I feel like that would be something that you probably, I mean, whether you do it when it's cold or when it's warm or whatever, I don't guess it really matters. But I feel like that's something that if if it's not expensive or if they're readily available, it seems like that would be a really great idea, especially in our area um, where we have older homes, right? Now there's a lot of new construction homes and I feel like those would be a significantly more energy efficient to start with. Mm. But, you know, if you're in Garland or Richardson or some parts of Plano or maybe even some parts of Allen or McKinney, you might find that the homes are a little bit older. It seems like those homes could probably really benefit from an energy audit. Do you, do you feel like that would be true? Yeah, absolutely. Especially with all the updates that we have and the improvements and energy efficiency. There are things that are just kind of potentially very quick fixes. Yeah. 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 You know, I have a house that was built in the seventies and when we first moved in, there was probably this much insulation in the attic. I mean, it was just non-existent mm -hmm. and our electric bills in the summer, not the winter, but the summer that year were terrible. And we just blew in some insulation. We had a company come out and do it. And, you know, we got feet, I don't know, two or three feet or whatever we have of insulation. Yeah. And that made such a huge impact. And I think that would have been something that was probably found like in an energy audit, don't you think? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, it made me think when you said that, uh, you know how the garages on the interior have those kind of places, they're almost like panels, kind of shelving. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people that put insulation onto that. And that re obviously that increases the temperature of uh, in the in the winter of mm -hmm. the garage, which means that I guess the temperature inside the house isn't quite as quite as cold. And sure. it, conversely, I think it does that in the summertime, you know, so. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. And we could do a whole Facebook live later about summertime stuff because that's a whole nother story, isn't it? Yep. <laughs> Man. Yeah. If you've never lived in North Texas, we get the extreme on one end and the extreme on the other end. And we're not prepared to deal with the cold weather for sure. In the same day. Yeah, some, that's right. Or in the same week, like yesterday and today. Just oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, do you have any other tips or anything for us, Camilo? You know, I think that's uh, I think that's about it. Okay. Well, thank you point. so much yeah. for your time today. Oh, yeah. I really, really appreciate it. And I always love chatting with you, but I especially love the fact that we could chat tonight and and give some good information to our viewers. So thanks so much for being here. You're welcome. I hope that was helpful. That was a lot yeah. of fun. Absolutely. I love it. Um, all right. Well, so let me just kind of wrap some things up real quick because, you know, we got to talk about the real estate market. We got to talk about the winter weather. I think it's so important that people understand that realtors are here as a good resource for them, not just to buy or sell a house, but mm -hmm. even once you already own the house, right? And we have vendor partners that we would be happy to recommend if you do need somebody to fix your gutters or you do need somebody to do an energy audit or whatever that thing looks like, please know that that's, that's part of what we do as real estate professionals is help you even after the sale. Um, so last thing I want to do as we're wrapping everything up is Camilo, let's see if we can give some great information to the folks today um, about what's going on in the real estate market. And I think Gabby, Gabby, are you here to be able to help do that for us tonight? Yes, for sure. I'm going to be providing some information in the chat for everybody on. Okay, perfect. So Gabby's going to put a link in the chat right now. It's going to be some free information about buying a home. I also highly, highly recommend that you subscribe to the North Texas Top Team channels and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, wherever you are. 
we are out there and we've always got really great information that we try to provide to our consumers all the time. So um, thanks for doing that for us, Gabby. I appreciate it. Thanks Thank you, again, Gabby. Camilo, so much for being here with me tonight. I really, really appreciate it. My pleasure. Super happy to be with you. Awesome. All right. Well, let me put something up here. I am going to do a quick screen share so that people know how to find you. So let me put my screen share on here. All right. Not that one. This one. <laughs> okay. This is how to get in touch with Camilo. So if you found value in the information that you saw today or heard today um, on Facebook Live, we first of all, we appreciate you joining us. And secondly, Here's a, a way you can reach Camilo. Camilo, can they call you? Is that is that okay if they give you a call? If they oh, have... yes. Awesome. Anytime. Awesome. Well, I just really, really appreciate you. Thanks so much for all that you do um, for uh, our office, for our clients, and of course, out in the community. I really, really am just thankful that you're part of our team. Thank you, Melissa. I love All right. Well, have a great night, Camilo. You too. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone.